Wonderful people of God, you can take seats. Amen. Welcome to the house of the Lord in 2012. Oh, tell another person, you are welcome to the house of the Lord in 2012. Hallelujah. I just want to say a big God bless you and welcome to everyone that is in the house today. Hallelujah. It is a great privilege to be in the presence of the living God in such a time as this. And we give all the glory to Jehovah God. Amen. He deserves all the glory. He deserves all the honor. Amen. I want to also seize this opportunity to say thank you to all the workers of the house. You are wonderful and I appreciate the Lord for what you are also doing in the house. Put your hands together for the workers of the house. Amen. We bless the name of the Lord for your lives. Everyone that walked into this place today, you are demonstrating your love for Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the one who died and rose again. And I encourage you, put your hands together for yourself, for your love for Jesus. Hallelujah. You love the Lord. That is why you are here today. Amen. We give him praise. Um, God has placed a message on my heart. And by the grace of God, I pray that um, I'll be endowed with wisdom enough to be able to break the word of God as he wants unto all of us. Amen. And uh, today I'm going to talk about the fact that favor is not fair. Favor is not fair. Praise God. Look at somebody and tell them favor is not fair. Tell another person again, favor is not fair. <laughs> Hallelujah. Pastor, what are you bringing up this time? Amen. Favor is not fair. Amen. Amen. I said favor is what? Tell another person again, favor is not fair. Tell, tell another person, tell them favor is not fair. Hallelujah. Love somebody and talk to them. It's, it's as if you are being too stiff today. Eh? <laughs> Amen. Amen. Talking about favor, the word favor, favor. Lift your Bible and say, this is my Bible. And it is the word of God. I believe whatever this Bible says I am. I will become whatever this Bible says I will become from today in the name of Jesus. Because of the power of the word of God, I am prosperous. I am advancing. I am increasing. I will only go forward in the name of Jesus. I will never retrogress in the name of Jesus. In every aspect of my life, I am increasing in Jesus' name. Somebody who believes you shout the largest amen. amen. Hallelujah. Favor is not fair. Favor is very, very unfair. Now, the word favor, favor, if we say favor, what are we talking about? Amen. And I was looking through and combing through dictionaries and to find out. And there is one that really I fell in love with. It says a condition of being regarded with approval and acceptance or goodwill. A condition of being regarded with approval. Hallelujah. You're being regarded with approval and acceptance or goodwill. Just being regarded with approval. Being regarded with acceptance, being regarded with goodwill. Praise the name of the living God. Yeah. I started going through the Bible to see if I can find out. Hallelujah. So the word favor, looking through the dictionaries, I found one that really pleased me. It says a condition of being regarded with approval and acceptance or goodwill. A condition 
of being regarded with approval and acceptance or with goodwill. Praise God. Looking at somebody and telling them I've accepted you. Amen. Looking at somebody and telling them, oh, I've approved of you. Praise God. Although there may be a lot of competitors, but favor will cause one to stand out and be looked upon with acceptance. Favor will cause somebody to be looked upon. Hallelujah. Favor will cause one to be appreciated over the other. So I looked at favor. I said, this favor, the way he works, is very unfair. Amen. Favor works very, very unfairly. You can have ten children, but you look with favor upon one than all the other children. Favor is very unfair. Praise God. Twenty people can go for an interview and for some reason you are picked among all the others, other people. In reality, somebody may be better than you, but for the sake of favor, you are selected. Favor is very unfair. But the beauty of it is, in 2012, God is going to deal with you Amen. with favor. Amen. Oh, you are, not, you are not understanding me here. <laughs> Hallelujah. In 2012, I said, God is going to deal with you favorably. For you are the favorite of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Many people will say it's very unfair. But in reality, it is the choice of God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Somebody can say it's very, very unfair. I accept it. But I did not choose myself. I was chosen by the Lord. Hallelujah. Let me check something. With us from the book of Daniel. Chap Daniel chapter number 1. Reading from the verse number 8. Daniel chapter 1, reading from the verse number 8. And I'm really picking on the verse number 9. Hallelujah. Now, begin to read for me, darling. But Daniel proposed in his heart. Now, Daniel purposed in his heart. That he would not defile himself. That he would not defile himself. With the portion of the king's with meat. With the portion of the king's meat. Nor with the wine which he drank. Nor with the wine which the king drank. Therefore he requested of the prince. Therefore he requested of the prince. Of the eunuch. Of the eunuchs. That he might not defile himself. That he might not defile himself. Now God had brought Daniel. Listen to that part. Since God had brought Daniel. Somebody say God. God. Somebody say God. Now God had brought Daniel uh -huh, into favor and tender love. To favor and tender love. To favor and tender love. Uh -huh, with the prince of the eunuchs. With the prince of the eunuchs. God had brought Daniel to favor and tender love with the prince of who? The, the eunuchs. eunuchs. Praise God. God himself had brought Daniel to favor and tender love with the prince of the eunuchs. Now hold it here. Daniel wasn't the only servant of the living God that had gone into the palace as a slave. Is somebody understanding me here? You see, even a whole town or a whole city was wiped and taken. Praise God. And when they were taken, some of the people the, the intelligent ones were selected to go into the palace to go and support the work of the king. Amen. They were going to train the, the scientists and all that so that they could invent and do so many things for the king or for the kingdom. But when they got there, among the selected, oh come on, are you getting the picture here? Are you getting the picture here? Among the selected, Daniel. Somebody say Daniel. Somebody say Daniel. In fact, somebody may have attended the same school with Daniel. Maybe Meshach or whoever may have attended the same school with Daniel. And maybe better off in knowledge than Daniel. Praise God. But God did not bring that person to favor in the sight of the king of the eunuchs, but chose Daniel. Am I talking to somebody here? 
Am I talking to somebody here? So this person can look unto Daniel and say, why were you chosen? In fact, it's very unfair. Amen? Amen? It's very, very unfair. I should have been the one to be chosen. But in reality, you were not. Hallelujah. Favor is very unfair. Amen? Favor is very, very unfair. But the beauty of it is, whether fair or not fair, doesn't matter. But God has decided. Hallelujah. God has decided to favor me. God has decided to bring you to favor. God has made up his mind that he will favor you. Favor is very unfair. Praise the name of the living God. God had brought Daniel into favor with the king of the eunuchs. Now, when Daniel was brought to favor with the king of the eunuchs, what did he do? Daniel now started using the favor. Listen, I was reading through and I saw that things favor can cause you to acquire without stress. And I said, wow, this is what I'm looking for. Thank you, God, for your word that you are bringing your people to favor. Ah, hallelujah. This year, you will lead a stress-free life. I say you will lead what? A stress-free life. You will have full concentration to help others. Oh, somebody, are you getting the picture here? You will have total concentration to do what? To help others. Because you will lead a stress-free life. Stress-free. Tell somebody stress-free. Stress Tell another person stress-free. Stress Tell a third person stress-free. Stress Hallelujah. Now in the book of Esther chapter 2. Esther chapter 2. Or rather Esther chapter 5. Reading the verse number 2. Esther chapter 5. Reading the verse number 2. Somebody open to Esther chapter 5. Reading the verse number 2. Esther chapter 5. And the verse number two. Is somebody there? And it was so. When the king saw Esther. And the queen standing in the court. That the queen obtained favor. In his sight. The queen obtained favor. In his sight. Praise God. Amen. This is a story I love so much. Praise God. Esther had gone to the king at a time that she was not supposed to have gone. Praise God. Pressure has pushed Esther to where she shouldn't be at a particular time. And Esther can die. She can lose her life as a result of going there at that particular time. Is somebody here with me? But favor, said Esther, instead of you dying, I switch it. I switch you from life, from death to life. And not just cause you to remain dead. I'm telling you, I say favor is very unfair. Listen, I say favor is very, very unfair. The reason why I'm saying that, somebody else could have gone there at that very same time. And the accusation of that person would have been... That hey, you were not supposed to have come here. You violated the principles of, of, of the kingdom. You violated the principles of the land. And because of that, you have to die according to the king's word. And that person would have died. But the one that had favor, the one that was favored of the Lord, walks in at that very same time, at that very wrong time. And favor says, you are not going to die. You will live and it will not remain that it's not about you going to live alone. The gain, ah, ah, I give God praise, hallelujah. The king says, Esther, what can I do for you? Listen, if you don't take care, favor will rob you. Oh, you are not understanding what I'm talking about. I said, if you don't take care, favor will do what? Will rob you. If you meet somebody that has favor upon their life, by the time you realize, you've given what you are not supposed to give. Are you here with me? Are you here with me? Are you here with me? This year, that will be your story. Oh, I said this year, that will be your story. 
It shall so happen that because of the favor of God upon your life, people will give to you what you do not even deserve. What they've not planned even to give to you, they will hand it over to you because of favor. Look at somebody and tell them favor is unfair. Hallelujah. Now in the verse number 8, there is something beautiful there. In the verse number 8, favor will break protocol. Oh, you are not understanding what I'm talking about. I say favor will do what? It will break protocol. Favor will break protocol. Favor does not respect protocol. Praise the name of the living God. Where there is protocol, when favor really gets there, protocol is broken. Protocol is destroyed. Protocol has no respect in the sight of favor. Is somebody understanding what I'm talking about? Now, read the verse number 8 for me and let me show you something. Now, Esther now started asking of the king. Listen, we are talking about a king who rules a lot of provinces. This man's diary, I believe, will be set before the beginning of the year. Come on, are you understanding me? Is somebody understanding me? Hallelujah. So his diary is set. Everything is in place. Now the king meets with somebody who has favor. Praise the name of the living God. The king meets with somebody who has favor. And what is happening? Now Esther asked the king. What did she ask? Go ahead. If I have found favor in your sight. And if it please the king. To grant my petition. And to also perform my request. Now let the king and Haman. Come to the banquet. That I shall not even I have. I will. Hallelujah. That means Esther had no plans. Of setting any banquet already. But he said I shall. I will. Praise the name of the living God. I will set a banquet. For the king to go to a banquet, oh, the king must have a proper invitation. Oh, come on, are you understanding me? Praise God. But favor stands before the king and said, King, come to my banquet tomorrow. Come to the banquet I am setting for you tomorrow. And listen to the king. Go ahead for me. And I will do tomorrow as the king has said. Chapter 9, verse 9. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm. 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 Hallelujah. Praise the name of the living God. Now listen. The short and the long of the whole thing is the king just there and then without protocol accepted to go to Esther's banquet for the following day. Come on. Is somebody understanding me here? Is somebody understanding me here? Please, don't go to a king like that and ask for a banquet. With it. it's, it's even disrespectful. Come on, is somebody understanding me? But when it comes to favor, accusation matters not. Am I talking to somebody here? May the Lord drop favor upon your life. Oh, I said, may the Lord drop favor upon your life. I said, may the Lord drop favor upon your life. May you be brought to favor with God. And may you be brought to favor with men. I said, may you be brought to favor with God. And may you be brought to favor with men. If somebody has favor in the sight of God, the person does not speak a lot. Is somebody here with me? The person does not what? Speak a lot. The little utterance, miracles are taking place. The little utterance, things are changing. If somebody has favor in the sight of men, sometimes they get just before men and just their presence alone is enough to give them whatever their heart desires. Am I talking to somebody here? I'm talking to somebody here. Listen to me. This year, you will walk in favor. Amen. You are not hearing me. I said this year, you will walk in favor. Amen. You will walk in the favor of God. You will live in the favor of God. You will dwell in the favor of God. In the mighty name of Jesus. I came to understand that favor is a gift. Favor is a gift of God. 
In fact, you don't qualify for it yet. It is given you. What do you call that? It's a gift. Praise the name of the living God. I was studying the lives of some people and I realized they didn't qualify. In reality, they didn't qualify. There was something to disqualify them from their position. Yet, praise the name of the living God. God hands it over to them. Hallelujah. Well, you don't qualify for it. In fact, somebody, you may be looking at your life and asking yourself, how is it going to happen? I was studying the life of a beautiful young lady in a village who one day in her life had a strange encounter. In fact, this strange encounter could have been for anybody else. It could have been for any young lady in the village. But it came upon this young lady. And I love the beauty of it. Hallelujah. The angel appeared unto her and said, you are highly favored. Praise God. Your favor is not ordinary, but your favor is highly. You have been highly favored. Amen. You have been highly gifted. God has looked favorably unto you. I believe that Mary was not the only virgin on the land at the time. If God was looking for virgins, he could have had virgins. Oh, come on. Are you understanding what I'm talking about? If it was only virgin that was the qualification, then the competition would have been keen. Because I believe some men may have forced their, their young girls to be virgins by strong hand and kind of training. Praise the name of the living God. And at the time, if a man is not is going to be married to you, praise God, the families will meet. And when the families have met, you are not married yet. That is why the Bible uses a word say betrothed. Amen. Betrothed. Hallelujah. To be married. Amen. She had been given to him to be married. Is somebody understanding me here? So they were not married couple. They couldn't do what married couple will do. Amen. And there is a day for the payment of the dowry. That day has been set aside for the payment of the dowry. And on that day, before the payment of the dowry, that was the night you, the man, are permitted to go and check to see if the lady is a virgin. If she's a virgin, then you come and pay. And if she's a virgin, woe betides you. The price you are going to pay. Come on, are you understanding what I'm talking about? Praise the name of the living God. It is not like today that you meet somebody and put a ring on their finger. And you begin to dance around and say we are married. No. Oh, is, is somebody understanding what I'm talking about? It wasn't like that. And on that very day, old men and old women will be asked to go into the room that you are going to check with the lady. Go and lay down white calico. You know that uh, white cloth. Huh? On the bed, decorate it white, pure white. And if the woman, uh, the man should have you on that day and blood does not show on the white, it means the lady was not a virgin. And if the lady was not a virgin, her bride price is just so small. And it is believed that the family is a disgrace. They didn't train their daughter well. If it were today, maybe they would say your father did not train you well. I, I, I'm not talking about you. Because I know you are all virgins here. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. But, hallelujah, there were so many virgins on the land because at least parents were training their daughters well. Hallelujah. So there were so many virgins. 
But an angel appeared unto one virgin among the virgins. Come on, somebody get a picture. One virgin among the virgins, and you tell me this is fair. Oh, come on, hallelujah. Maybe Mary's father or mother may have a friend or may have a cousin who also had a virgin daughter. Praise the name of the living God. But the angel did not visit that virgin's daughter. But the angel came unto Mary and has the angel's statement was thou art highly favored. Hallelujah. Thou art what? Highly favored. It does not say you are favored. It says you are what? Highly favored. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 1. Let us finish it for today. But we will continue. Please, listen to me. This month, you will smile. Amen. Favor. Oh, you will walk in favor. Amen. Over the whole of the year, you will walk in favor. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Praise the name of the loving God. Luke chapter 1. Reading from the verse number 20, 26. And in the sixth month. And in six months. The angel Gabriel was sent from God. The angel Gabriel was sent from God. Unto a city of Galilee. Unto a city of Galilee. Named Nazareth. Named Nazareth. To a virgin espoused to a man. Now listen. An angel has been sent. Not to the king. Not to the queen. Not to the rulers of the land. But to a virgin. Hallelujah. Oh come on. Are you, are you understanding what I'm talking about? God is sending and God did not send to the king nor to the queen. But God chose a young girl, a virgin. And you are telling me this is fair. Oh, come on. Hallelujah. Oh, you are telling me this is fair. I can comfortably tell you today that favor is very unfair. Amen. But whether fair or unfair is not the case. Praise God. Whether fair or unfair is not the case. God has decided. Am I talking to somebody here? God has decided. Look at somebody and tell them God has decided. Oh, tell another person God has decided. Favor. Very unfair. Yet you can't do anything about it. Because God has decided. Read on for me. Name Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph. To a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph. Joseph uh -huh. Of the house of David. Of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. The virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came unto her. The angel now came unto her. And said. And said. Hail. Thou art highly favored. Hail Mary. Thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. The Lord is with thee. Now listen to the following statement. Blessed art thou among Blessed women. Blessed art thou among all women, including my wife. Is somebody got in the picture here? It says, Blessed art thou among women. Among all women. Why didn't God choose my mother? Very unfair. <laughs> Why didn't he wait and choose my wife so that I would have been the Joseph? <laughs> Very unfair. Oh, come on. Are you understanding what I'm talking about? Praise the name of the living God. Amen. Amen. If he had chosen me, maybe I would have done better. I would have taken care of this boy. But the truth of the matter is it's very unfair. Hallelujah. He knows what he wants. And he chooses what he wants. And this year, people will be angry with you. But you will even have ha no hand in what is going on. Because the truth of the matter is you did not bargain for it. You did not fight for it. You did not call for it. You did not ask for it. You did not even pray for it. But all you realize is favor has brought it your way. You are not getting the picture here. Hallelujah. Praise God. Favor is unfair. Yet, we are going to live in favor. 
we are going to walk in favor. In fact, all our life will be full of what? Favor. Amen. This year, 2012, is a year ah, of explosive increase. And people will not understand why you are increasing. Praise God. In fact, sometimes the story around you doesn't permit increase. Am I talking to somebody here? Am I, am I talking to somebody here? Sometimes the story around you does not permit increase. The name people have given to you does not permit increase. In fact, the kind of lifestyle you are leading does not permit increase. But God said, I have found my servant David and with my holy oil have I anointed him. I have anointed him unto myself. The children of Israel said, God, what are you doing? This man is too short. He says, I don't care. I have found him. God, when you were finding there were schools, universities, and good places that you could have gone, he said, no, I went to the bush and on the desert, on the wilderness, looking around among the animals. And even there, I believe there were other shepherds there. But God says, I did not find them in any other shepherd, not the tall ones, nor the short ones. The Bible says David had a few sheep, a few sheep, a few sheep. If a few sheep, how were they able to attract God? God says, I have found my servant. Listen to me, listen to me. What you have this year doesn't matter. What you, you don't have doesn't matter. All you need is the favor of the living God. All you need is the favor of God. You need favor in the sight of God. And favor in the sight of men. And you will walk through this year like a hot knife going through butter. I declare over your life that you will not struggle this year. I declare over your life that there will be no obstacle. Strong enough to stand against you this year. This is your year of smiles. Oh, you too, you will smile. Oh, you too, you will smile. A lady came to me and said, Pastor, I have done one wedding and they say, you don't do two weddings. So wedding is once in any, everybody's life. And I told her that is not in my culture. Praise the name of the living God. That is not in my culture. In my culture, as long as you are not married, you are a virgin. That's me. Praise God. And this year, I'm going to do a wedding for her. I'm going to do a wedding for her. Hey, whether you like it, or you don't like it. In fact, you may choose to come to the wedding or you may choose not to come. It wouldn't matter. It wouldn't do anything. The truth of the matter is favor. Among the Lord. Yes, you. Look at yourself and say, I'm favored. Say to yourself, I am favored. Say to yourself, I'm highly favored. Look at yourself and say, I am highly, 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 highly favored. Praise the name of the loving God. May the Lord walk upon opportunities your way. Listen, sometimes you look at people, they are richer than you. They are more beautiful than you, more handsome than you. In fact, they are more eloquent than you. You know that ah, this one, ah, I know that they are better than me. But they will be still working under you to, so, to survive. Listen, it's not you are better. It's not the fact that you are too good. But it is favor. God has lavished some favor upon your life. Praise the name of the living God. Listen to me. To some of you, they don't respect you in your family. Nobody takes your word for anything. Your word is like nothing. But watch out for this year. They will beg for your ideas. I said they will beg for your ideas. I said they will beg for your ideas. Let me give you a picture. When Samuel went into Jesse's house and he was told, bring your, your sons. He brought sons and left a son. Come on, is somebody getting a picture here? He brought sons and left a son. 
but the one he left, the stone the builders rejected. Praise the name of the living God. The stone that the builders what? Rejected. Oh, this year I want the rejected. Oh, I want the rejected. I want the rejected. I want the disappointed. I want the discouraged. I want those who are down. I want those who say, ah, it's over. I want them. I want them in our fold. So that Jesus will turn your situation around. Will write a new history about your life. History shall be rewritten this year. In the name of Jesus. Because of the favor of God. Oh, somebody say the favor of God. Somebody say the favor of God. Somebody say the favor of God. You can scream, I need your favor, Lord. Praise God. Because of the favor of God. Just the favor of God. Turns the situation around. Turns the story around. The story becomes different. Hallelujah. Something new is being paraded. Jesse brought his sons and left a son. God said, the one you left, he is the one I want. I choose the one you left. You can leave him, but I will choose him. Let them reject you. Let them neglect you. For it's an opportunity for God to find you. When they accept you, you go into the multitude. But when they reject you, you are alone. And Bible says, I will lead my beloved unto the wilderness. And there will I comfort him. May the Lord bring you comfort this year. Oh, I said, may the Lord bring you comfort this year. In the mighty name of Jesus. Today, listen to me. The word of God says, I should decree a thing. And it shall be established. All I'm going to do, I'm going to speak favor over your life. Listen, I say, I'm going to do what? Speak favor over your life. I'm going to prophesy favor over your life. And your life shall never remain the same. I want you upstanding if you can. Listen to me, you are ready to receive one thing. Something very, very unfair. And the name of that is called what? Favor. You are about to receive something that which you are about to receive is very unfair. Praise the name of the living God. In fact, looking at yourself, you don't qualify. But that's the year the Lord. I'll give to you. Praise the name of the living God. He told me specifically that today I am in to release favor upon my people. Listen to me, from today, you cease from being ordinary. Because you are going in the favor of the Most High God. Your hands are lifted. Your hands are lifted. You are going before the Lord. All you are saying is the Lord, my rejection is over for today. Favor is my portion. And that is my share in the name of Jesus. Your voice is lifted now. Your voice is lifted now. I need your favor, Lord. 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 Lord, the favor of yours. The favor of yours. That is all I call for. In the name of Jesus, you told the people of Israel that because of favor, I release favor unto you. And because of the favor, go for their gold. Go for their silver. Go for their riches. Because of favor, Father, give us favor. Give us favor. First in your sight that our word will be pleasing unto you and we will speak only your word in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Jehovah favor. El Shaddai favor. Elohim favor. Adonai favor. Shama favor. Mes Check this out. 1,977 years, 134 days, 16 hours, and 28 minutes ago. 
Jesus was asked, what is the greatest commandment? Jesus simply answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. The message says, love the Lord your God with all your passion, prayer, and intelligence. You see, our love for God must be sincere, not just by the words we speak, but also by engaging our souls. To truly love God, we must be passionate about Him, inside and out. The only way to follow this command is to make loving God our first priority. That means everything else takes a back seat. But there's more. Jesus also said, the second greatest commandment is to love your neighbor as yourself, which also means love others as well as you love yourself. Love the unlovable, love the ones who don't deserve it, and love like you want to be loved. So the lesson is simply this, love God, love others. But the great thing is, if we make loving God our first priority, then loving others comes naturally.